Today I'm going to show you how to get this squarish, blocky looking PlayStation 1 game looking from this to this, looking beautiful in 16x9 with high resolution and working great on an iPad through RetroArch, which can now be run through the App Store. So there's no more janky side loading. We can run this officially on an iPad. And today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install this. We're going to be using a DualSense controller or any other Bluetooth controller to get this running. I'm going to be enabling the XMB menu interface through RetroArch and you how to load up BIOSes and ROMs through RetroArch on the iPad file system. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go to the App Store and I'm going to download RetroArch. So just do a search for RetroArch and then you're going to find the app here. So it's this one here, the one with the black icon. We're going to go ahead and download this. So this is completely free to download. So don't worry about any cost. This is completely free. So once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and open this here. So this is all loaded up now. So one of the first recommendations that I'll definitely make is to use a controller because the touchscreen controls aren't fantastic on RetroArch. So I do recommend doing that. So just gonna show you how I pair my PlayStation 5 controller. So just gonna go to settings, go to Bluetooth, make sure Bluetooth is turned on and then put this into pairing mode. So the PS5 controller isn't the only one what we can use, we can use DualShock 4, we can use Xbox controller, but basically put it into pairing mode and then pair it up a wireless controller, highly recommended. So once that's paired up, we can actually use this to control RetroArch. So the next thing that I do recommend doing is changing the menu interface. So this touchscreen interface is actually okay for touch, but uh, if you want to use a controller, it's a little bit cumbersome to do. So what I do recommend is doing is going to the cog icon, go to user interface, tap on here, and then scroll down until we find menu. So at the moment is this GLUI. So I recommend using XMB. So this is the cross media bar reminiscent of PlayStation 3. So we need to restart in order for this to actually work. So I'm just gonna pull this app up and then flick this there and then put this back. And then we've loaded up the cross media bar. So I'm just gonna move this a bit. So this is the PlayStation 3 like user interface and we can control this using the controller like so. So the next thing that I recommend doing as well is changing some of the input settings. So one of the annoying things that comes by default is the fact that this uses the kind of AB type interface. So what I like to do is to swap them over. So if I go to menu controls here, and then I swap the OK and cancel buttons, now this is swapped over. So now this is gonna be cancel, and this is gonna be okay. So this is the, the Western configuration standard. Now we're basically ready to load up some games. So just gonna show you how to do that. So in my files app, which I'm gonna load up here, you can find this by typing in files and do a search. I have on my iPad various games. So for legal reasons, I'm not able to show you where to acquire these games from. What you should be doing is ripping them from your own genuine discs. So for example, this is Tomb Raider. And what we have here are files ripped from a PlayStation 1 disc. So this consists of .q and several .bin files. And this basically is one disc worth of files. What I'm gonna do here is take this entire folder and uh, we're gonna press move. And then what I'm gonna do is to move this into the RetroArch folder. So this RetroArch folder got created when I installed the app, and then we're gonna go ahead and put this in the downloads folder here. What I'm gonna do here is call this one PSX to basically represent PlayStation 1 ROMs. So within this folder here, I'm gonna move this Tomb Raider folder there. That's my PlayStation 1 game. So if I get it on my iPad, RetroArch, go here and go to downloads, I have this PSX folder with this game. The next thing I'm gonna do is to load up BIOS files too. So I'm not able to show you where to download BIOS files from because these are copyrighted files, but basically you can extract them from say a PlayStation 1 or often you can download huge packs of these as well. So you can find them under BIOS packs. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is basically move this entire folder by holding down and then pressing the move button. And then I'm gonna move this into our RetroArch folder. And uh, this will go into the system folder here by default. So I'm gonna press the move button and then that has also moved into the RetroArch folder under system. So all the BAS files are there. We have a, a whole pack here. The one that's really important if you wanna download everything is this one called scph5501.bin. That's for PlayStation 1 BIOS. And there's dozens of others which we can use as well. So now we're gonna go back into RetroArch. The next we need to tell RetroArch where to find the BIOS file. So we're gonna to go to this cog section here. Then we're gonna to go to directory. 
So this is going to basically determine where the BAS files are. So um, I've actually put the BAS file under system. I could have extracted them further, but I'm just going to select this BAS system folder here under there. And then this contains all of my actual BASes. I'm going to press use this directory. So this is now using that directory that we set up earlier. So basically, we're going to go to the left hand side here and then select load content. And then we'll go to downloads, go to PSX, select Tomb Raider, and then we're going to go up and select the .q file, which is the main file, select that. So we're going to now select the core. So PSSX um, doesn't actually require the BAS file, but uh, we're actually going to use Beetle PSX HW because it has a few options. And uh, we've now loaded that up. So now this PlayStation is booting up. So the main thing is that if you want to come to the RetroArch menu, you can press the home button by default, and then that's going to allow you to access this menu. You can save the state. Then that's saved now. So of course you could use the touchscreen controls to play this game, uh, but controller is obviously highly recommended. So this is PlayStation 1 Tomb Raider being emulated through the iPad using this DualShock controller to play the game. So we're going to press the home button here to access the menu, and we're going to use the quick menu here. We can change some options here if we want to. So core options, and then we're going to configure some settings. So one, which is this PGXP, which changes the wibbly wobbly graphics of the PlayStation 1. You can turn that on. Let's turn on to memory only. Let's turn on these fixes, turn it on here. And if I put this back, then the graphics don't wobble as much. Another thing that we can do is change some of the emulation hacks. The widescreen mode hack changes the game from the 4x3 into the widescreen aspect ratio. So that looks a hell of a lot better. And also what we can do is change some of the video settings as well. So internal resolution is the one that's going to make the biggest difference to how the game looks. So let's change this to four times and then go back. And then you'll see that the graphics are way, way sharper than before. This game is looking way more kind of modern because it's using that widescreen aspect ratio. And it also has much better graphics and it doesn't wobble around as much as it did before. So that's like a pretty huge difference in graphics. And this is only really available on the Beetle PSX HW core. So if you're using the PCSX Rearmed, you can only go up to 2x resolution and some of these options are just not going to be available. So this really just changes based on the core that you're using. So anyway, that's how you get beautiful PlayStation 1 games running on an iPad through RetroArch through the App Store. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.